Good day, everyone, and welcome to Microsoft Build. It's my pleasure to be with you today to share with you some insights on how you can accelerate your development lifecycle with fewer defects through integration of frameworks and tools. I'm Corey Pendleton, Director of Solutions Engineering here at Qt Group. I've spent over 19 years developing and helping others develop and deploy software applications and products successfully to their end customers. Today, we're gonna to start with a quick review of the most widely used development methodologies in the industry. Then we'll inspect some of the risks that are inherent to all methodologies. I call these the flashpoints. These are the points where friction in the workflow can lead to unexpected costs and delays later on. Finally, we'll consider how modern tools can be employed to reduce that friction and accelerate your product development. First up is waterfall methodology. In this traditional model, each phase of product development is completed and validated prior to proceeding with the next. This ensures a complete, well-defined product with clear feature scope and that that gets delivered to the customers as they expect. This model does not easily allow for modifications mid-development stream. It's not that flexible. You also find a lot of interdependencies with this model. Front-end developers are often waiting on the UX team to define how the user interface should look and behave. And if the graphics or the user experience changes, those developers may have to rewrite pages from scratch. Testers are often waiting on the developers to complete features so that they can begin their integration testing. Otherwise, their tests will, can, will break and they will be forced to redo some of their efforts. For this reason, most companies these days use a hybrid with some waterfall aspects and some agile aspects. In Agile methodology, requirements are analyzed and reprioritized frequently based on user feedback. Teams for each discipline work together on each sprint, and this ensures that the product adapts to end user expectations and allows cross-functional working groups to reduce dependencies and information silos. But it can lead to increased technical debt through scope creep and lack of predictable schedule, frequent deadlines can lead to shortcuts that can cause costs later on in the development life cycle. Regardless of the methodology that you use or the hybrid of them, there's always friction in the handoff of deliverables, whether between product development uh, or in waterfall, the phases of that development or in communication between the team members in agile, this is the riskiest time for software development projects. Were the requirements clear and well validated so that we know what we're supposed to build? Was UX able to settle on an ideal design or will that change on us? Did software engineering understand and follow the system architecture as they began their development? Do the testers have enough time to fully validate and verify all of the requirements? Spoiler, they never have enough time. But what if your tooling could enable some flexibility? What if it, you could iterate within your development workflow and accelerate your verification and validation, all while reducing confusion and inter-team dependencies? What could that look like? Well, let's talk about the first phase in all development methodologies. The first flashpoint comes after receiving the requirements when teams begin that design phase. In all methodologies and all disciplines, this is the point where foundational decisions are being made, and these are decisions which impact the rest of the product life cycle all the way through maintenance. The UX and UI team are deciding what the UI should look like, and it's hard to reach a complete status with that work. What if user testing uncovers a better way and changes need to be made? What about maintenance phase? 
if new changes come or new features are implemented, can those fit with the existing user experience? For software engineers, what if the architecture has to change due to new feature priorities? How easy will it be to maintain that, that software and that architecture? And what about testing? How can testing engage in the design phase when we don't even have functional software or any definition on how that software is going to implement the requirements? You could write test plans based on the requirements. You could even write some initial ideas on test cases, but you can't do anything really functional. Or can you? Let's look at each discipline and see how they might be able to improve on the design phase. During the design phase, user experience engineers and graphic artists begin to define the look and feel for the product. These teams work in tools uniquely suited to make the creative process seamless. Tools like Figma have revolutionized the industry by enabling collaboration, transparency, and greater flexibility. For the software team, the design phase means system engineers and software engineers are defining the software architecture and the software design. There are numerous tools available to help define and manage your software architecture, whether you use something like Enterprise Architect or Rhapsody, Visio, or even just hand-drawn diagrams. Uh, it's critical to get this right in order to ensure creation of a stable and scalable and maintainable product. These are the, quote, best laid plans, which will guide the development effort. But we all know what usually happens to best laid plans. It's also at this stage where you define the platforms you'll support, both hardware and software. Whether you need to target desktops using traditional x86-64 architectures or more modern desktops built on the ARM architecture. Or if you're targeting embedded devices, typically on ARM, but also the up and coming RISC-V architecture. Selecting a framework that's flexible that can support every potential platform target for your product is key to prevent exponential growth in your maintenance costs through having to re-implement the software for each unique architecture. And what about testing? During the design phase, before creation of any functional software, test teams are typically relegated to defining test plans and formulating preliminary test case scripts. However, with automated quality assurance tools like Squish GUI Tester, Behavior-driven development allows you to design test cases that verify product requirements during the design phase. BDD can be used and viewed as an enhancement to test-driven development techniques, but applied to integration testing as opposed to unit testing alone. The Gherkin natural language, which you see an example of here, enables clear mapping of tests to feature requirements, which can be communicated between tester, developer, and product manager with ease. Later, as software units are completed, each line of this script is converted into a functional automated step to perform the described verification. After the designs are completed, either for the product or the current feature, it's time for implementation. This is the next flashpoint, and the front-end developers must receive, interpret, and accurately implement the UX designs. The back-end developer must receive, interpret, and adhere to the software architecture while implementing the required functionality. Testers must validate that the implementations they receive cover all of the requirements and behave correctly. For user interface or user experience teams during implementation, they deliver their designs and their graphics to the front-end software team. Traditionally, software developers must implement the supplied user experience with the supplied graphics 
and then collaborate with the UX team to resolve the discrepancies in the layout. We all know <laughs> most engineers don't have an eye for design. So five pixels of spacing here or there, push transitions instead of cover transitions. This is always a source of friction and often a source of great cost as things need to be adjusted and re-implemented uh, potentially many times during the development lifecycle. But today, tools like Figma can be integrated with developer tools like Qt Design Studio to actually generate front-end source code exactly matching the UI design. This provides a jumpstart for the development team and ensures that the creative vision of the designer is upheld. For the software team in this phase, this is where the work really begins. Traditionally, there's a lot of boilerplate code that's required here. These days, AI-enabled IDEs such as VS Code or our own Qt Creator help to eliminate some of this friction through intelligent code completion and natural language problem definition. Although code generated from these machine learning models must still be carefully reviewed, obviously, the acceleration of these initial steps can save large amounts of time and free developers up to focus on the more challenging implementation details. Front-end software engineers implement the user interface while back-end software engineers begin to bring the platform, the architecture, and the software design to life following object-oriented or model view presenter patterns, for example. Developing with a modern declarative language such as QML, which you can see here, makes it 20 to 30% faster to create UIs that are dynamic, engaging, and high-performing. Here's an example of a QML UI for a thermostat. QML code can be generated directly by Design Studio or handwritten by software engineers. As you can see, it describes the UI and specifies the properties of each control with a familiar JSON notation. Memory is also managed by the Qt framework, removing a lot of common pitfalls in the development process. As implementation proceeds, designs may be revisited, and especially with the Agile methodology, frequent deadlines can drive shortcut solutions during implementation. Because of this, there's a heightened risk of acquiring technical debt when the source code fails to adhere to the original design. With tools like Axivian Suite, you can monitor your implemented architecture for deviations from the designed architecture. And you can analyze features to aid in conformance with software standards and best practices using the static code analysis. This helps prevent technical debt from accruing in the first place. And what about testing? During implementation, test teams are typically waiting for completed features from the developers. Then they're able to begin running manual tests and documenting the results. This dependency usually delays detection of bugs, which causes an exponential increase in time and cost to fix them. However, with the test cases already defined at the design phase, you're able to begin implementing interactions with the application prior to minimum viable product or feature completion. In the example you're looking at here, a tester will use their preferred scripting language, such as Python or JavaScript or Perl, to specify the sequence of inputs required to put the application in the, quote, scenario state. Then they specify the properties that define and establish the given condition. Next, they create the automated steps to trigger the when behavior and finally identify the properties or the appearance of the application that describe a successful then state. Each scenario is a test case, and each line of the BDD script we just looked at triggers a function executing automated steps and or verification points to verify the requirement. So in the example you see here, we have the Python implementation for a when condition. 
Traditionally, there's significant risk in writing your test steps too early. The UX might change frequently based on ongoing customer and team input. This often breaks automated testing tools, which rely on consistent control locations on the screen and consistent behaviors. But if you make use of an object-aware testing tool like Squish, your tests are protected from this because software introspection enables identification of specific software objects and their properties, not merely screen coordinates and screenshots. In this way, your tests are much more robust and less likely to break down as development proceeds. Then by integrating test automation with your CI system, you can verify requirements continuously, capturing defects even before they make it into releases. With the aid of the right tools, we're able to accelerate the design phase with a multi-threaded development approach. We're also able to merge the implementation and testing phases into one phase. Not only does this dependency elimination reduce time to delivery, but through this shift left quality approach, we also dramatically reduce the time and the cost of defect resolution. Here at Qt Group, it's our mission to help our customers improve productivity in the entire product development process. If you want to learn more about cross-platform development and accelerated testing, and explore free evaluations of our tools to accelerate your workflow, please feel free to contact us. We'll also be here at Build all week, so come by and say hi. Thank you again for your time and attention. And I hope you have a wonderful time and learn a lot here at Build 2025.